okay guys welcome back in this video we basically going to show you uh, the complete display of this side um sorry this video is not really in order it's been done over the span of a month so i've been videoing and the videos are a bit out of order but yeah the gist is there so basically um this is the finished product i'll show you next snippet i'll show you the car outside and then you will see me prepare the body and spray it and then you'll see all the runs I get in the spray job so this um, quickly to show you um, I had a run in this area run here run here as you can see it's now perfect no issues at all I also had a run a massive run here as well somewhere here that's also you can see what's left of the run up there uh, the beading is going over here so I'm not really worried about that but as you guys can see, you guys can see the reflection of um, the BMW in the background. If we go over to the paint job on the BMW, yeah, let's just say I like this. Um, but um, so OEM versus backyard garage uh, spray job. So yeah, guys, um, and special thanks to Rotac Paints. Uh, they supplied me with the paints. Um, I looked all over the place for PPG paints and I could not come right and I found them on Facebook. They actually talked Nexa. It's Nexa paints. It's actually made by PPG and this is the paint I used here. Uh, it's a very small shop and customer service is great and they'll really go out of their way to assist you. So guys, please support small business and especially businesses that uh, give you such um, good uh, service yeah check them out in Madrid. but uh hope you enjoy the video and uh yeah so this is what is what can be accomplished in your garage a bit of practice and you can do it yourself if i can do it any of you guys can do it so yeah hope this helps hope this video helps someone so yeah, so far what I've done is I've prepped it with 800 grit. I've wiped the panels down with thinners. I've wiped them down with... First I wiped them down with cloth. Then I wiped them down with thinners. I wiped them down with um, wax and grease remover. Silicon wax remover. And now I'm going to tack rag it. Use a tack rag. Get rid of the dirt. And then I'm going to paint. So last time before I painted, I used thinners. I used the wax and grease a removal but I was rushing and then use a tack rag and there were lint there were pieces of lint on the panel and I wasn't too happy with that. I managed to cut it out but still um let's just do it the right way so guys don't ever rush your paint jobs. So yeah then now everything is ready I'm just gonna mix the paint. So in mixing the paint I've got a basically a paint ruler here. You can see it says four to one and this says says two to one. Now, um, with this PPG Nexa paint, we use 2 to 1, so basically you can see it's got 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. So if you're doing 2 to 1, you, your paint normally goes on number 1, first number 1. Then your second number 1 will be up to your hardener, and then 5, 10, 15, 20%, each line is 5% of thinness. So with this, it's recommended to use 10% thinness. So if you want more paint, you go 2, 2, 2, then 3, 3, 3. So that's how you mix it. Or you can use a paint cup which is this year so on the 2 to 1 you can see A and then B, B, C, C uh, that's your paint, your thinners uh, paint hardener and thinners um, and unfortunately on this year the A is 400 ml and I think it's a bit too much paint so I'm using the ruler instead with the ruler on the inside I can actually get it to about 300 ml so we'll mix more paint if we need I'd rather mix a bit less than having too much paint so let's just uh, tack rag it and then get ready for paint. So firstly, let's mix the paint and then we'll get the rest done. All right, so guys, if you can see, on this I'm gonna go one, I don't know if the camera should pick this up. So one paint, one thinners, and then 10%, uh, sorry, one paint, one hardener, and then 10% uh, thinners. Let's mix it up. Okay. That is one on the paint, making a big mess here. Yeah, 
again. Okay, we're using the hardener, MS hardener, again. All right, there's one there. We'll be using the next uh, medium thinness. Gonna go on the second line on the ruler. Here we go, not much. Because it's also important to get your painting area clean. I've cleaned out this entire garage. I've blew, uh, used air and blown the extra dust out. Uh, just make sure you don't get dust in your paint. And now on the, the gun itself, you get a straining um, a strainer that you can use. But uh, I've just got a old piece of curtain here, the lace that I'm going to use to strain out the paint. This is a backyard job, job after all. So. So now we're just going to tack, tack the surface with this brand new tack rag. So basically you want to open your tack rag and then just loosely punch it together and then just lightly wipe the, the surface. Alright, loosely punch together and lightly wipe the surface. Alright guys, so first coat is done, not too bad. 
got some gloss looking pretty straight I don't know if the camera can pick this up but there are a few dirt nubs very few um, so your panels are straight I mean out of a gun I can't complain with that um, you can see the reflection there we go pretty good um, just three issues the first one don't know if the camera will pick this up but it is just at this angle you can see there is a slight line here that is from I think the a run that I had on the first spray job or the spray job three days ago I've got that and I've got a little dirt up there so there's something in the paint which I'm not going to touch uh, I'll let that dry and then we'll attend to that that's two and the third one is right here at the bottom you can see it a bit of dry spray I don't want to go too heavy because I've got aerosol there but uh, the next coat we're going to give this pretty heavy you can see haze on this fender the front is, is fine but the top you can see haze that fender this fender as well not too bad but uh that guys home paint job in the garage i'm pretty happy with that to be honest with you the other issue i'm having guys is that as you guys can hear after every like panel the compressor starts off because i'm, I'm spraying at four and a half bar um, this gun is actually meant to spray between two and three bar i'm actually pushing way beyond its limit i'm trying to atomize the paint to get a smoother finish um, i learned that from bad Ch chad uh, it actually does work very well you don't need an expensive spray gun but the problem now is that i'm using a 50 liter compressor and with a 50 liter compressor it runs out of steam very fast so after every panel i'm giving you some time to build up pressure and then doing the next panel so which is actually not the right way to do it but i'm working with what i have we using a 600 gun 50 liter compressor in the garage so we make do with what we have i will have to upgrade to a 100 liter compressor for better jobs but uh, yeah that will be in the future so just to bring you guys up to speed with what's happening there so yeah let's let's get this done Okay guys, so we've got a, as you can see there's a bit of dirt in there, I think some of the old paint flaked out, so I'm just going to use some masking paper, roll it up, and let's see if we can get that out. Okay, we're going to push it up, but uh, well, let's give it some extra paint on top of that. And then we'll rub it uh, when we're ready to cut and polish. We'll see how it comes out. Alright guys, so we we kind of fold that area up. I should be able to cut and polish that. This here, you saw what we did. I'll give it a bit more paint 
once it dries up a bit, so we'll be able to cut and polish that. Um, yeah. Oh, we just got a bug that landed in here now. <laughs> Let's get that out. Okay, guys, it's the next day. Um, I kind of ruined the, the paint job. You can see I got a bit trigger happy. Got some runs there, got a run here, run there, and the door is fine. And I've got a big run here. This is where the uh, those bugs and those pieces of uh, dirt that flew in and I tried to put a bit of extra paint um, so let's try and rectify it the rest of the job didn't come out too bad um, okay paint work always looks better on camera than it does in reality so you can see the orange peel it's not a uh, mirror finish you can see the, the reflection of the light here you can see it's, it's not smooth and clear, clear. Uh, that's orange peel which we'll get rid of so what I've decided to do is <clears throat> I'm going to use a blade it's flexible so I'm going to try and flex it out a bit and try and cut as much of the imperfections out or the run out and then thereafter I'll cut it with 800% sandpaper. so let's try it out and see how it works never done this before yeah Let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, as you guys can see, I've, I've cut quite a bit of it out. I don't want to go much deeper. The rest I'll cut over the sandpaper and do that. So I'm basically going to do the same here and here. Also here. And then we'll rub it on 800 grit and see how it comes out. I'm not going to waste your guys' time by actually running you through these. Um, me cutting them. It's going to basically be the same as that right there so let's get it done and see how it comes out all right guys uh, it's now night and um, I've cut down this runs using a blade earlier on um, and now I've got 600 grit sandpaper which I'm going to use to try and flatten out this run it's a bit coarse for this but uh, I'm going to try and I'll cut this out as efficiently as possible I'm not going to use too much pressure on it that I don't want to burn through I'm going to be using a rubber block um, to assist me with that I've got the water I've got the paper soaking water so let's let's get on with it and see how it uh, comes out
all right guys so we finished uh, sanding down here as you can see basically the run is gone you want your entire your paintwork to look like this you don't want it to look like this this you can still see orange peel the bottom if you polish it you'll still see these divots um, and that'll give you orange peel effect you want it basically smooth like this um, but with 600 I just want to get rid of the run obviously I've got that there yeah there to do I'm not too worried about that because the beading is going to go over I will run rub it down though um, I'm worried about this little here and there um, the aim of this exercise right now was just to get rid of the runs so that's one that's done um, so let's now do the the second third and fourth run if you get rid of those then the rest of the paintwork will be done with 800 grit sandpaper this was just to get rid of the run so paintwork is not looking too bad in at night under the fluorescent tubes fluorescent light sorry um, you can see some reflection all right so let's let's hit the second one Okay guys, so that day was extremely fast, about 30 seconds, and it's out, so let's do the next one. Alright guys, so... Yeah, we're busy cutting and polishing. As you can see, I've basically done this entire side. <clears throat> you can see this high gloss. Pretty happy with the way it came out. So I'm just going to run you guys to the the way I figured out how to cut and polish. I've tried several different methods on this car, different pads, different polishes, and this I think is a winning formula for me. So if you look at this fender. This is the spray out only and that's the cut and polish section. So if you look at the, the light right here, that is the, the fluorescent tube, the fluorescent light, that is the reflection of the fluorescent light. So if you look at it down in the painted part you can see it's, it's not very clear, you can see there's distortion there. But if you go across to the polish part you can see. It's mirror like. There we go. Uncut, unpolished, cut and polished. Let's just show you guys the reflection in the car. You, can, you guys can see that's the reflection of the garage. I still need to cut and polish. I still need to polish this door a bit more. Um, but yeah, you can see. Uh, this is only the polishing stage, I still need to put the finishing wax. Um, and obviously that will give it a deeper shine, but yeah, pretty happy with that. So let's get to the, uh, the method I use. So uh, let me get the tools, I'll show you guys. Okay, so what I've found is I've got a DA sander, electrical polish sander with an interface pad. Yeah, and I'm using 1500 sandpaper so I'll cut this down to 1500 with the DA and then I'll go up to 2000 grit with sandpaper and then I will go with my polish C strata uh, STRATA that's made by Cresta and then afterwards I will finish it off with Cresta P1 so the first polish will be Presta Strata and then Presta P1. Um, on this I'll use the woolen pad, on the Strata I'll use the woolen pad on speed 3 and then speed 5 and then I'll go to the P1, speed 3 and speed 5 on the foam, white foam pad. That That is what I found works for me, works very really nice as you guys can see the finish, brilliant finish on that. So yeah guys, I'm going to do this section here on the fender. Let me get to it, I'll show you guys. 
So first I'm going to use the orbital, the DA sander with the interface pad in 1500. We're going to wet the area down and we're going to do the section. Okay. Alright guys, we've got our water bottle. We're going to spray water, keep the area wet and we'll start with the DA. Make sure there's no dirt in here, that will cause unnecessary scratches. The point of this is not to actually sand a lot, you just want to get rid of the orange peel. Alright guys, as you can see there's some shiny areas here. So, let me zoom in. That shiny area is uh, where the sandpaper didn't get down to the uh, to cutting that, that part of the paint. So that's the orange peel that we need to get rid of. We actually want it to look flat, like this here, with no shiny areas. And that's how you will get a model finish on your paint. So we'll go we'll go for another pass with the DA and we know which areas to concentrate on. Just be careful, don't go too heavy on the, the corners because it'll cut straight through and it'll go to the uh, material underneath. Okay. Alright guys, so after the second pass you can see there's a little bit of area here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the... I don't want to continue with 1500. I don't want to cut through. I'm going to go with the 2000 grid sandpaper with a block and let's see if we can get down to get rid of this orange peel here ok I've got these sponge blocks, these are actually sanding blocks that I bought from Gelma I've just taken out the rough in the parts of it and just left with sponge, I've got different sizes I'm going to use a medium size and let's try and cut that out Alright guys, so you can see most of it is uniform now with the 2000. Got a little bit here, but I'm not really bothered about it. The bumper goes over it and you'll barely see it. But yeah, that's that's basically what you want, a flat finish. So now we're going to start with the polishing. We'll start with the starter and the woolen pad. The bit, or does, is a cutting pad. So just be, be careful of it. I would suggest that if you guys don't use haven't used one, I'm not uh, familiar with it, get a spare uh, panel, like I've got a spare fender that I've been practicing on. Um, yeah, just be careful not to burn through, take it easy until you're comfortable with it. Um, yeah, so, so I will be polisher, I'm going to start on speed 3.
notice the crisscross pattern horizontally then vertically um, feel your panel if it's getting hot if it's getting hot then wait because that's a sign that you're burning through on the rotary machines it's uh, pretty easy to burn through on the DA dual action which has an orbital pattern doesn't spin on the spot it does an elliptical fashion that day you have less much less chance of cutting burning through but it takes more effort um, to cut so another round on speed 3 Alright, now we're going to go for another pass, but with on speed 5. You can feel the panels getting a bit warm. And do note that I'm putting a bit of pressure on the machine. So now, I'm going to dial it up to 5. And note that I'm not holding it flat, I'm holding an angle. Um, by doing this I'm getting more pressure, but I've got angles here to work on. It's much safer to use it flat, but... Uh, I'm a bit comfortable with this now, so I'm using it this way. Okay, it is a bit warm. I put the extra polish. Alright, guys, so that's uh, speed number five on the um, pulling pad. Now we're going to go with the shorter P1 and the uh, white wool, uh, white sponge pad. We're going to yeah, finish it off. So I'm on the panel. Okay. I'm going to dial it down to speed 3. Clean out the panel and we'll bring you guys back. Alright guys, so now we're not really done. I'll go over this again. I'm not really happy with the finish. It's got a few scratches, but yeah, one cam that was difficult to get on top of this. I'll, I'll get this done again and then I'll put some finishing wax. But as you guys can see, that's the polished part. That's unpolished. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Don't forget guys, you can get all the stuff from Rotec Paints. And uh, yeah, let's try and get a better view of this tomorrow. But yeah, polished. 
unpolished user friends.